many of us would like to approach the subject of valuation. And I think the subject of ENP token valuation is a really important one. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I venture to guess that the work that we have done at Empower on the topic of our token valuation is amongst the best in the Web3 space. And I'll tell you why. Because we correlate our valuations with actual activities that are happening. And just like uh, the valuation of a bond can have several different models or the valuation of a company stock, you can do it via dividend, via accounting statements, can have several different models or market value. Here too, we have several different approaches to discussing the valuation or means of accessing the value of the EMP token. I'm going to have to refer to the documents a little bit because uh, we spent months and months and drew upon the expertise of some really brilliant people in order to define not only the valuation of the Empower SDRI NFTs, which was actually the easiest part because that was basically manipulation of bond pricing formulas. But the EMP token itself has certain unique properties because it is at one time associated with the market value of the houses that it's being used to collateralize. But it's being in that market value calculation, it's based on a weighted average because the collateralization actually reduces over time. I mean, the more a loan is paid off in the Empower platform instance, there could be instances, of course, where the negotiators look at a project and decide that no, the token, the EMP token collateral must remain there for the tenure of the financing instrument. But in other instances, thanks to the technology that we employ, we actually have the ability to reduce the collateral that is held dynamically across the life of the investment instrument. And when that happens, the valuation of the token should necessarily change as well because the amount of capital asset the EMP token is securing is also reducing dynamically. On the other hand, we can also look at the valuation of the token from the perspective of the revenue that the platform is generating and the amount of token that is employed in the generation of that revenue, which is the revenue model. And yet further still, there is a way of valuing the token based on the amount of debt that is collateralized, which is the collateralized debt model. Every valuation, particularly whenever we're dealing with equities, also includes an element associated with the expected return. So there too, we have an expected future return model for the valuation of the EMP token. And ultimately, there is a weighted average portfolio model because some analysts may want to look at how the EMP token is employed across different project portfolios, like development project portfolios, or across different countries. So in that instance, we'd be using a weighted average portfolio model. Other instances, you may have analysts that are trying to quickly define, well, how can I stick a finger in the air and get a sense of what the value of the EMP token 
is based on all the debt instruments that have been issued via the Empower platform. So the name of that model is uncreatively termed the proxy debt model. Conversely, perhaps we're in a situation where the market prices of homes have not been evaluated because we're only dealing with new build projects <clears throat> that have their purchase prices. So the market price is something that tends to be easier to evaluate after purchase when there's been property appreciation. But in that interim period, when you have purchase prices, when a product has initially been sold, we may also want to evaluate the value of the token. And there we have the proxy purchase price model. The final valuation model, which is the most complex, is the collateral allocation model. And the collateral allocation model basically looks at the market value of the property and the collateral associated with that property on a weighted average across all the projects plus the amount of EMP that is actually being utilized. So that is the collateral allocation model. But I've mentioned many models and one would say, well, how come you can have so many different models? How do you know which valuation is right? Well, actually there's one model I left out, which was the actual market price model, which is based on the uh, market price of the token. However, in early goings, the market price will tend to be incorrect because if there isn't sufficient liquidity, the market price is not actually going to reflect the fundamentals. And anybody who would dispute that and say, well, if the market price says this, that must be the value, then they haven't really done work with private companies because the market price, even though a private company is not traded, the market price is based on what people are willing to pay for that company. Just because it's not traded on an actual index doesn't mean that company has no value. But the critical thing we have to look at is all of these models are generally different ways for traders and analysts to get a sense of what the fundamental value of, the, of one single EMP token is. And if done precisely, you're going to find that there is a convergence. So what is that convergence? Well, that convergence theoretically is the Empower platform value. I'm gonna read this. So the Empower platform value is basically the total market value of all houses in the Empower ecosystem times the proportion of each house or the debt associated with each house collateralized by EMP. The reason why we make that adjustment is because we're particularly interested in the amount of value that is affected by the EMP token. We cannot claim value associated with the EMP token when the EMP token has not been employed. So we have the total market value of all houses in the Empower ecosystem times the proportion of each house collateralized by EMP plus the net present value of the cash flows generated through the platform fees. And I'm not sure if you recall, but the platform fees included the underwriting and issuance fees, transaction fees, direct broker dealing fees, qualified broker dealing fees, and asset under management fees. Collectively, these fees and valuations determine what the value of the Empower platform is, and by corollary, determine the market value, or rather, determine what the fundamental value of the EMP token is, and traders can use that to, to ascertain whether the EMP token is trading at a premium or a discount to the market price.